always cover the teaching aspect in a, a single assessment task. So we don't always know what's going on in the teaching phases. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of a background here. Um, in my last session, we talked about this unit briefly. Uh, it's a long unit, about 10 weeks, 12 weeks. We start with a pickleball formative exploration and we move into a summative phase where we use tennis to explore the inquiry statement and the concepts in the ATLs. So inquiry, state, in, inquiry statement, excuse me, uh, is proper form improves function. Now you can see some of the major concepts in there. One is left out, but refinement is something that we um, we use to introduce the unit as well when we talk about practice makes perfect. We don't like saying that. We like to say proper practice makes progress. So we have our questions here. The ATL um, is self-management, creating plans to prepare for summative assessments. Uh, we do hit on the learner profiles just to uh, keep things aligned with uh, with the PYP as we're coming up into the MYP. Um, that's just a quick intro of this. I will be coming back to this and referencing this uh, uh, while kind of hitting on some of the indicators. So I'll go to, without further ado, here is the assessment, okay? So the assessment here is covering criterion A and B, which is knowledge and planning. So the task for the students is here, it says it right here, uh, your task is to design and explain a skill-specific training plan to refine the form and function of your forehand skill. Um, to add some context, the kids have gone through a brief planning um, formative uh, while we were covering the sport of pickleball. It was very informal and mostly in action out on the courts. Um, that's some of the information that doesn't obviously get communicated here. So if you ever receive any feedback from any of us about something that you know you hit on in your teaching, just kind of toss it to the side. I hope that's an appropriate thing to say. I didn't get that cleared. But um, my suggestion would be if you know that you're hitting on something that you receive uh, suggestions on, then just, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt, of course. Um, you can research existing drills, exercises, and games, or create your own. Uh, gives a little bit of choice there. We'll come back to that. And then the plan will consist of one activity as reflected in the template. Uh, a little background, this um, assessment of mine can be leveled to uh, MYP 1, 2, or 3, and I usually change that number in a couple of the task instructions. Um, to break this down, the kids are going to have some pretty clear instructions here that you can see have been tied to concepts, and you can see a lot of bold and it it uh, italic stuff in the, in the task descriptions and the step-by-step -step here. We're going to come to that next as we move into our first A. So just with a quick breakdown of that, we can see uh, some aspects of authenticity. Okay, again, authenticity, does the task give students a chance to apply their knowledge and skills in relevant contexts? So straight away, we're going to look at students respond to the statement of inquiry. Now, if we go back and we want to see what the statement of inquiry was, right, it was proper form improves Function. I think we can have a little bit of a tick on that one because the first initial um, task description is to create a plan to refine the form and function of the skill. So I think we, it's safe to say that we have hit that indicator. Um, moving on, students create a product that is relevant to the real world. Now, this one for PE is sometimes tough to have a conversation about. Um, is a real world problem having a poor forehand in tennis? Okay, if we look at that on a surface level, of course it's not, all right? It's not the end of the world. It's not a big, huge problem. I think the way that we package that when we get into our teaching is that we really want kids just to learn how to approach um, skill-specific things for any kind of sport that they're doing, uh, create plans and, and realize that they have the power to create progress on their own skill development. Um, so in my perspective, it's hit there. Again, if this was just something uh, maybe an assessor was reading, they might not get that context, okay? But that is what's happening in my teaching. Um, so the students respond to the debatable question. Also here, um, I chose this because, you know, it's never perfect. Um, here, the debatable question um, upon reflection isn't really not great because the debatable question is what skill will you use? This more applies to the choice of skills across sports and in the formative 
um, portion of my unit, we really did explore all the different skills of pickleball and they got to choose. So that debatable question applies to the whole, to the unit as a whole, not specifically to the assessment. What does happen in this assessment, which is also not included on this task sheet, is, is that the students are not generally improving their forehand. They are actually breaking down the skill into the four acquisition phases of that skill, which is the ready position approach, um, contact, and follow through. So they've watched themselves on film and they've actually highlighted which part of that, of that forehand they really need to work on. So um, if we are looking specifically at that response to the debatable question, they are choosing a, a portion of the skill in the, in the summative, but have explored many skills in the formative. So then again, on to solving a real world problem. Um, I think I mentioned that here. Is it a real world, world problem unless you're a tennis coach? Um, not really, but it does give the kids the skills and the ability to identify um, a portion of any skill, uh, create a plan, put it into, into action, reflect, and then um, move on and uh, reflect on their progress. So I think as far as authenticity goes, we go pretty well here, but again, needed some context, right? So that might be something that we run into as reviewers. Um, as far as alignment goes, the task elicits evidence corresponding to each strand being assessed. Now, in my tasks, I will always, always, always include a rubric that has command terms aligned into the task, right? So we can see clearly here on the task that I'm asking a high level of command term, okay, as the standard to begin with, and we'll see if we hit them, right? I'm asking kids to des design, explain, and here we talk about describe and explain. And if we go down to both of our rubrics, here's my A rubric, the language is reflected within the rubric, okay? So we can see describe, explain, um, there is some added in there just to kind of um, differentiate the level of success. And then the big one here I spoke about in my last session is design, because um, there is a design aspect built into the instructions here where I want them to design a diagram to further explain what their um, drill game or exercise will look like in order to allow organization for the plan. So I think we get that one there. Um, task specific clarifications illustrate what success looks like in the context of the task. I think we've done pretty well here as well. Um, these rubrics have de been developed over quite a long period of time, and I try to add as much conceptual understanding and to make the, uh, the command terms differentiated, like I said, as we progress from one to eight. I also like to do a little thing when I, uh, I put my rubrics in because I want them to be student friendly and accessible. If there's a kid who just goes, oh man, I can't quite remember what explain and apply and describe mean, I always like to link the command terms in here. And I have one of my traffic uh, light posters here with the command terms on them that align to all of, not just PE, um, they align to all of uh, MYP uh, two in this year uh, command terms, essentially uh, three, but it's a little bit of a mix in one and, and, and three. Uh, some of the content that they're asked to use in this as well. They need to identify fitness components and, and muscles. So some of that stuff is here as well. Just quick access for them. And then um, again, if you were part of my last session, we talked about concept application sheets where, where the students are seeing the direct um, connection of the conceptual understanding to the um, content and the activities that we are participating in. Um, and then any additional criteria like neatness or participation are considered separately from the MYP. I can show you a little example of how I did not add that into a rubric, but I did add it into an example um, or a strategy for completing assessments. Um, an extra little bit that I didn't get to in my first workshop is um, I have, I usually make these for all my major projects. And this is um, just a, a um, rubric alignment with the task instruction. So basically, I used to use this just for assessment, but um, now I realize that it is definitely relevant to the students. So they can see exactly what descriptor that they are hitting on each aspect of the assessment within the instructional steps there. Um, 
this is the A, you can see here, I've got, you know, B1, B2, A2, B2, all aligned, and as well as the uh, conceptual application where they will be using the different concepts. Um, I, I do this for all of them. I've got a B aligned here, but then um, we also assess C and, and D in this unit. So I've done that for that as well, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll stay away from that just for time's sake. Um, but a very good tool. I suggest using that um, not just for yourself, but also for the students to, to align where they are hitting each, um, each descriptor. So as far as alignment goes, we're looking pretty good here with this. Um, again, I'm biased because this is my own assessment. Please, if you see anything there, please comment or um, offer us some feedback later. Um, we will move on to accuracy. All right, will the task give you accurate insight about the extent to which students met the objectives? This one I had a little bit of trouble with looking at, but um, I think it's one of the more important ones. The task is sufficiently rigorous that students can reach the highest level of achievement. Um, now, the fact that we go through a formative, a quick formative planning phase where the kids are making plans for success, and then we do talk about how they are planning towards a summative performance. So their A, the knowledge that they're using, and the B that they're planning with will uh, be used towards their actual C performance. Um, most of the kids do pretty well because we do, um, we do spread this over a certain amount of time, about five weeks minimum for the summative. Um, so they have a lot of time sharing. And this is another thing that doesn't come through on the task sheet is some of the um, formative just peer sharing that they do. They train each other in class. We do a couple rotations of, you know, being coach client type of thing. Um, so their plans will be field tested, um, which allows them to get more uh, um, feedback from their peers as well. So I believe that um, after that process, you know, most kids have, have the ability to hit that high level along with their command turn understanding and conceptual understanding. And that just goes along with here, we, we do scaffold this, um, this process. Uh, MP, I feel it's hard to, on a task sheet, give evidence of that scaffolding, but also we could argue that these one to seven steps are scaffolding what we expect on a quality plan. So I think we hit that there as well. The task specific clarifications illustrate the distinction between the levels of achievement. And I think we did hit on that a little bit before um, I think just even the traffic lighting allows kids to understand that uh, what level of command terms they're going to hit and a, a really strong understanding of the difference between states, outlines, describes, explains is very important across the MYP, not just in PE. So if these are very clear on a rubric and we're always asking the highest level, um, I think you'll usually see a, a generally a high level of, of achievement. Um, and then if not, obviously we just find where the disconnect was on those, on those certain um, um, students, those specific students. So I think we're doing pretty well in that respect as well. I'll take a quick time look here. I'm not moving fast enough. Uh, accessibility. Students have some choice and agency about how to best communicate their learning. Um, the choice is not necessarily in how they communicate it, but I guess you could argue that it is because they get to choose their activity that they are presenting. They get to choose how they're doing it. They get to choose how they're performing it. They get to choose what part of their forearms or forehand skill that they believe they need to improve on. And that's actually not much input for me. Um, it becomes very clear once they watch themselves and analyze their own swing, uh, uh, what part is not quite up to, up to snuff. So they get to choose how to approach that. Um, the, choose, the students have had a chance to develop the disciplinary um, and ATL skills that they need to succeed in the task. And I think if we look back to that ATL skill, it was planning towards a summative goal. It's exactly what they're doing for those five weeks. And that is definitely um, uh, a pretty significant amount of time and many chances to, to uh, realize that and use that skill again with some of their peer sharing. Um, this is one that I kind of wanted a little bit of interaction with, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get that in this context at the moment. Um, but students from different cultural linguistic backgrounds are equally likely to succeed in the task. Um, this one that it, I did not plan this um, assessment with much of this in mind. Um, I think in PE, sometimes those PE teachers go, you know, sport is kind of the global language. Um, tennis in Spanish and tennis in German and tennis in Russian is still tennis. 
Um, so I believe in that with that aspect that it is a physically um, focused assessment that uh, I do believe it is accessible. Um, I think we will obviously offer um, um, support to those who have lower English abilities or need some support in that respect, um, but that comes within your school context as well. But I think there, again, for accessibility, I think we are doing pretty well with this, um, with this assessment example. Um, I'm going to move on to the fifth A, which I actually didn't mention. I might have mentioned it briefly that I said there was four or five. And the fifth one only applies if you are going to actually submit um, samples of work. Um, and this is kind of goes along the old uh, style of MYP moderation, I guess, where we look and see, you know, do we think that uh, the, the assessment sample reaches or fulfills the level of judgment that you have uh, have awarded it? Um, so what I've done is for this specific one, I've offered here a couple examples of a seven, eight achievement. I did think about going through and doing a proper moderation, kind of low, medium, high, but as far as time goes, um, I don't think it would have been very appropriate. So I think what I'll do is I'll pop up a an example of very high achieving. Um, this is a grade seven MYP two assessment. I've, again, I've done this across uh, years in the past and they do look a little bit different. Uh, when this assessment first came out, we were looking at two activities uh, and I realized this was a bit of a reflection piece for me is I realized that when I had two activities, a lot of the time when I was um, marking it, I didn't need to even get to the second activity to have enough evidence to score the student on the rubric. Because uh, I didn't include the number of activities in the rubric, so it was irrelevant to the task. Um, I could see uh, describing, explaining, designing through one um, um, example of this. And you'll see in this example, there are actually two. Um, also, one thing that we're being very wary of in the MYP, obviously for P, is how long do we want kids sitting down writing? Um, it, it's my philosophy that the education part of this physical education um, job that we do is very important for kids to communicate their learning. So I do believe an aspect of writing is important um, or, or, you know, blogging, vlogging, things like that. Um, but for this one here, I, I used one of my strategies that I really enjoy is always combining A with a B with a D um, because you can't complete a plan or a reflection on a topic without using the, the knowledge and understanding of that topic. So why not put them together instead of separating them? So you can see here that um, the way that I tagged this um, assessment on my on my scoring and, and, and aligning it with the descriptors here, I can quickly go through and find evidence of all these things being hit. And um, I mean, if you can skim through this, the design aspect was a big one. If it was just a picture here, I probably couldn't say that the design of, uh, of an activity was done because there was no actual um, created piece of work from the child. So the fact that they just went on and put a couple circles as cones and showed the fact that, th that this is the movement of this drill that was made by the student and included um, and a similar here on the second one. Um, here, a great uh, explanation of and description of how the exercise is performed. Um, application of uh, the knowledge of the forehand, um, what we need, how long it's gonna take. And then this is the big one for A here is the fitness components being directly applied to the specific movement of the task, as well as the muscles and the way that they function in respect to this task. So you can see, um, some people might be wondering why it's all colored. Um, one thing that I talk to kids about in the formative is um, just a highlighting technique that came from one of the English teachers that I worked with for a little bit. Um, we always talk about uh, some of the biggest mistakes that middle schoolers make is they submit an incomplete task. Um, so a quick way for kids to just alleviate that problem is color code the individual and most important things that are being asked of you in the task. And when you look at it later, and you're missing a color, you know you're not done yet. 
Um, because I always say, if you don't complete the task, it's very difficult for me to tell you how well you completed the task if you haven't fully completed it. So just another little trick um, of the trade to make sure that students are completing full tasks so that you have enough evidence to give them the levels and the scores that they deserve. Um, so with the uh, time in mind, we'll just go back to, we covered all four A's there um, with an a, a criterion A and B tennis forehand um, training plan uh, assessment task. And um, hopefully you can see how we're going to approach and review some of the tasks that you submit. And um, you can see how you might be able to take a backwards approach with some of these A's in developing or reviewing and reflecting on your own assessment practices. Um, and that's it for me. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, thanks so much, Chair, and to everyone who has joined us today on the live call. Uh, thank you, everyone, for making today so exciting and for your participation. If you have any questions about today's event, please send us an email um, on events at toddlap.com. Jay, once again, thank you so much for all your wisdom and enthusiasm. This has truly been an amazing workshop, and I'm hoping everyone who's watched us live today uh, are going back feeling much richer and feeling prepared to power up their MYP assessments. Thank you so much, Jay. Thanks a lot for having me. Hope to hear from you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.